What's going on guys, Merrick here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the maps from the classic Battlefront 1 game that is now a part of the classic collection. Some of these maps are remembered as the most iconic maps of the Battlefront series, and just overall some of the best multiplayer experiences that started online with Xbox Live. So first up we have Best Pin Platforms, and as seems to be tradition, uh, our first pick is going to be S tier. Bespin Platforms is one of the best maps for a reason. Aside from the fact that the, the constant struggle to maintain the center command post, uh, the extractor, is, is just, it's always just back and forth, especially depending on what faction you're playing as. Uh, some factions have a little bit more of an advantage there. And it's also the biggest map as far as aerial um, combat with starfighters because Battlefront 1 didn't have space combat and so instead it had starfighters on ground maps which was kind of better than space combat not gonna lie however while there were plenty of ships for players to pilot there still wasn't a whole lot of room I mean you could fly, you know, so far in each direction away from the actual platforms, but eventually you would hit a soft kill barrier, would be like, return to the battlefield. And if you didn't, you would just blow up. So you had the room, but not really. You had to kind of come back fast, otherwise you would just die. But the, the map just allowed for so many different ways to play, whether it's taking the extractor, whether it's taking a ship and sneaking around to one of the... Uh, rear command post to for flanking or just dogfights and starfighters it was just one of the greatest maps of this game then up next we have best pin cloud city and <laughs> again you know it it's going in s tier cloud city is personally one of if not my all-time favorite maps from the original game I think the two Bespin maps are just fantastic. So, there's something about Bespin in general. It's just it's always fun to play no matter what game you're playing on. And the Cloud City map in the original Battlefront, it takes all the charm of Bespin platforms and it puts it in the city. It's close quarters. There's a lot of hallways and walkways. And it's really compacted, but not in a negative way. No matter what faction you're playing as, there's always a viable strategy for this map. All the classes are pretty viable, for the most part. And it's just, it's always a lot of fun. Nine times out of ten, when I go and hop on to the OG Battlefront game, I would rather play Bespin Platforms or Bespin Cloud City. And usually if I'm picking the two, I'll pick Cloud City just because there's a little bit more variety with the gameplay for my particular play style. But yeah, it's definitely, it's got to go in S tier. Then up next, we've got the Endor Bunker, and I gotta put this one in B tier. I kinda wanna put it in A tier, because I love Endor. It's it's such an iconic, lush planet, and I just love the visuals that we always get for Endor in the various games. Especially the newer Battlefront 1 and 2 games, it's just so pretty. But, gameplay-wise, it's not great, especially for... For me, who likes playing as the Empire, I either have to play stupid aggressively or I have to hop in the ATST, and so it doesn't allow me a lot of uh, variety for gameplay when I play this because I don't really like playing the Rebels so much, and it seems like the AI for the Empire is already dumber than the AI for the Rebels. If you let the two factions just duke it out and you don't ever spawn, the Rebels will win pretty much every time. And then with the addition of the Ewoks, which you wouldn't think is a good addition, it really is. So, unless I'm just absolutely just slaughtering and taking command posts, the only way I can really win is with the ATST. And while it is fun, it it just doesn't give me a lot of replay value. Then up next, we have the Geonosis Spire. And I gotta be honest, because I know there's so many of these maps that I want to put in S tier. And I know how much you guys hate when I do that shit. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in A tier. It's like an A plus or an S minus. It really it hurts me to not put it in S tier because it's such a good level to play on. But again, I feel like I have that, that issue of you have to play so aggressively 
if you were playing as the clones. You wouldn't think the Geonosians do that much, but they just seem to do a lot. And while the clones do get two LAAT gunships and the ATTE, the AI are idiots with them. And so unless you have unless you or another player is piloting them, they're not doing as much as they really could be. And so the spider walkers and the hailfire droids, aside from just the droid infantry themselves, they're just doing so much more work. So while it is fun and I love flying around in the gunship and just using the, the massive laser cannons and letting the AI use the other laser cannons on the ship, it's a lot of fun. ATTE, not so much. It is a power. It is a powerhouse, but it's it's really slow and you, you can't really do a whole lot with it, so it's not as fun. But if you want a guaranteed victory, piloting one of those two vehicles is a guaranteed way to win uh, without having to do much work for the clone side. Then up next we have Hoth Echo Base, and this is another one that I really I want to put in S tier, but I'm gonna drop it down in A tier so we don't upset anybody. It's an, again, it's a fantastic map, though unlike Geonosis, it feels really one-sided, similar to how Endor feels, uh, but always in favor of the Empire. Now, if a player knows how to fly the snow speeders and they can get the AI to actually use the tow cable effectively, you can take down the walkers with them and kind of turn the tides of the battle. But if those walkers don't go down, there's no winning for the Rebels. Two AT-ATs and an ATST is going to absolutely obliterate Rebel forces, and there's just no hope. On top of the fact that infantry already is doing part of the work for you, and a good player can take the command post relatively easily, uh, or just, you know, be a sniper and just pick off rebels from afar there's so many different ways you can play this but it is heavily in favor of the empire as it should be because that's how it was in the movie then we've got camino topoka city and i'm actually probably gonna upset some people with this but since i'm trying to be harsh i'm gonna put it in b tier it's a b plus possibly an a minus it's one of the better levels in my opinion and it's really thematic as far as the Clone Wars era goes, the prequel era, it's a lot of fun if you like sniping. Uh, but if you don't like sniping, it's a pain in the ass with all the turrets around. And all the platforms create these choke points. And <laughs> it's not great for the clones. It's not like it's necessarily one-sided like the other three... Uh, era specific maps are but it can be that way if you're not doing as much to help out your your team again really fun for snipers but for other infantry like <laughs> the rockets are more or less useless you can blow up turrets with them but the jet trooper just does it better the the pilot is just eh, it, it comes down to playing as a sniper the default clone trooper and the jet trooper which are all great options but it gets really hectic trying to take those command posts, and if you don't deal with those turrets, you're going to get shredded. Then we've got Kashyyyk Islands, and this one, this is going to upset some people, because I know some people really said they like Kashyyyk Islands. This is going in D tier. It's not absolute trash. I don't think any of the maps really are going to fall in F tier, but it's, it's easily one of my least favorite maps to play on. If you're playing as the Rebels or the Clones, great because the Wookiees are actually better AI than the Ewoks or the Geonosians but oh man playing as Empire it, it's so it's such a headache because the Empire again already has dumber AI I'm convinced of it and it just you're you can be just absolutely murdering and still lose it's just it's an absolute just fucking chaotic mess unless you're playing as the rebels and the clones because she docks on the other hand this is a really fun level i'm gonna put it in b tier if you like sniping this is one of the best sniping maps this almost feels like it inspired the uh the beachhead map from battlefront 2 because it's very similar obviously 
the droids in the Empire, they spawn on the opposite side of the beach, or the opposite side of the water, and they, you know, have to make it over to the, the shore, to the mainland, and as the clones, as rebels, you've got great sniper vantage points up on the piers, and it's just, it's such a better version of Beachhead, in my opinion. I think it's a better map overall. The Empire and the droids can absolutely take this map, though, if they played it properly, because the Empire gets the ATSTs, the droids get spider walkers and AAT tanks. You can absolutely just obliterate the rebels and clones and the Wookiees with these vehicles. And it's not that hard to keep them alive either, because yeah, rockets do their things, turrets are eh, but they have no other vehicles to really counter. So it's very easy for them to get the advantage if they utilize those vehicles properly. Otherwise, it's a sniper's paradise for the clones and the rebels. Then we got Naboo Planes. This one's alright. I'm going to put this one down in C tier because I don't like it as much as some of the others. Uh, it becomes a constant struggle for whoever's going to hold uh, the center command post. And that one is chaotic as all hell. There's just there's very little cover, and the cover that there is is only shielding you from one direction. All the other directions, you are completely exposed. And with each side having various vehicles, it's not really safe, even from standing directly behind cover you really have to do your part to get rid of the enemy faction's vehicles in order to have a chance on this level uh, there's the other command post over to uh, the right side and the opposite side of the woods that one kind of switches hands every now and then it's not the most important command post but it's kind of the second most important outside of the center command post the droids and the empire have the advantage having that hill which is also where they have their AAT tank and the ATST spawn, which are just superior vehicles overall. So it's a harder time for the Republic and the Rebels, and having the Gungans as allies just doesn't really do much for you. Then up next, we have uh, Naboo Theed. This one's going to go in B tier. I really like this map. I actually prefer the version in Battlefront 1 over Battlefront 2, uh, aside from the fact that there's more vehicular gameplay going on. Uh, there's more to it, and also because of the higher faction count, the higher reinforcement count, it's much more fun. Uh, but also just the way the command posts are set up. Uh, for some reason, Battlefront 2 kind of splits the command post down the middle in the opposite direction. It makes it really awkward uh, starting out. It's just it's not as good, but it's pretty fun to play in the first game, and I feel like it's a lot more balanced as well. Then up next, we have Renvar Harbor. This is definitely going up in A tier. This is another one that is heavily in favor of the Empire. Uh, in the first game, the Empire gets the at, -AT and gets two of the hover tanks. And the clones get an at -T -E and two of their hover tanks. While the Rebels get their little speeder tanks. And the droids get their, their AAT tanks, but... In comparison to the walker they're just not great sure better players can eventually take out the walkers with those vehicles but it's it's all comes down to who's the better whose team has the better players but if both sides are equal it's coming down to how fast the rebels and the droids can either take all the command posts or wipe out the enemy's reinforcement count before the walkers just completely obliterate them. Then we have Renvar Citadel. I'm actually going to go ahead and put this one up in S tier. I feel like Citadel is one of the best maps in the entirety of Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2. There's just something about everything going on on this map. Now, there are a total of seven command posts. Um, two of them in particular, just don't really do a whole lot. Uh, the observation at the very back, which is where the Empire and the clones spawn, it just serves as your spawn point, but it doesn't have any value whatsoever. And the crypt in the very back is absolutely the most useless command post. Otherwise, the other five command posts do see a lot of action. They see serve a lot of purpose, but controlling the center of the map is, of course, 
the biggest advantage, and that's the command post that most of the action on the map will eventually converge on. And so gaining that command post early is just paramount to winning, and that's where the Empire and the clones have the advantage of having aerial troopers. You can just fly up there and take it before there is any chance of the droids of the rebels even getting near that command post. Then we've got the Tatooine Dune C, and I feel like I want to put this one in S tier. I'm going to say it's an A+. Plus. Just, again, so we're not pissing people off with too many in S rank. But this is, again, one of my favorite maps. I'm really upset this one didn't make it into Battlefront 2. Uh, this one and platforms easily should have been put in Battlefront 2. Not that the, the four that they chose. Well, three of them they chose were great. One, eh. But Dune Sea is, is fun. It's chaotic. You have a third faction that is not... It's neutral. It's not on anybody's side. Like the Ewoks, the Wookiees, the Gungans. The Tusken Raiders don't give a shit. They are out for themselves. They will kill your faction. They'll kill the enemy faction. They'll get killed themselves because they spawn by the Sarlacc. There's a Sarlacc on the map. There are Starfighters on the map, so you can fly around and kill infantry, fly around and kill other Starfighters, fly around and kill tanks. There's so much going on on this map, and it's really fun to play, and there's so many different ways to play it. And while the command posts don't necessarily all feel like they have um, an even amount of value, of course the homestead is in the center of the map and it has the most value. It's where more or less most of the action happens uh, outside of back there by the, the Sarlacc and by the Tuscan spawn point. But controlling that part of the map is pretty much controlling how the entire match goes. Then up next we have Moss Eisley. This is another one that's going in A tier. It's classic. It's Moss Eisley. It's Star Wars at its core. You've got the Cantina. You've got the hangar. The starport basically. And while it just has a smaller version of like Jabba's sail barge in it. It's still a cool command post. The other four are just kind of eh, but they're very Tatooine. So even though they aren't anything in particular, it still feels like you're immersed in the city. There's a lot of close combat that goes on here. There are some points for snipers. You can get on top of a lot of the buildings. There's turrets on the buildings. There's a lot going on. It's not one of the absolute best maps, but it's definitely in the top half. Then we have Yavin Temple, and I'm going to hurt some feelings here. Yavin Temple has got to go in D tier. I just do not enjoy this map. It's again, feels super one-sided against the droids and the Empire. Uh, the upside is the droids and the Empire, it feels like they have superior weapons or superior vehicles on the map, especially the ATSD. but... It, it's just, the map overall isn't really fun to be on, and taking the command posts aren't as fun. I, there's just something about the map I just don't enjoy. Visually, it's, it's nice. It was great for its time. But as far as doing things on the map, I don't really want to do many things on the map. And it's just easier for me to just be an ATSD and just wreck shit. Now we've got the Yavin Arena. I I was going to put this in B tier. I think it's going to go in C tier, but it's it's a high C. I don't know if I like it better than planes or not. It's very it can get very chaotic. But the bigger issue I have with this map and I went over this when I did my various videos on all the maps is that the two outer command posts are just fucking useless. Like sure they serve a purpose of being a command post if your faction loses all the command posts inside the arena, but otherwise, I just they're just useless there. The vehicles out there, just useless, because you can't do anything with them unless you're trying to take that final command post. It's just not as it's just not as fun. The action inside the map can get really hectic and really sweaty and make you have to play your heart out just to be able to not lose the match. And so that's why it gets the credit it deserves, but 
it just it feels like they're they're just better maps and overall I, I feel like it's place is justified then lastly we have the only dlc map for battlefront one and it's Jabba's palace i think i'm actually gonna put Jabba's palace in a tier it's a really hectic chaotic map no matter what faction you have you are trying to control the center which is Jabba's throne room and just throughout the map there's just fucking gamorian guards everywhere and they hate everybody they are on nobody's they're on Jabba's team and you're not on Jabba's team so you're not on their team they don't like you they will one shot you with that axe and they will sneak up on you before you even know what hit you until you just cleaved in the back of the head it's a lot of fun but it can be a lot of frustrating too I feel like it deserves to be up in the the upper half of the maps um, just for the sheer the sheer sake of insanity that happens and anything goes anything can go and the Gamorreans themselves can take command posts and just completely fuck up how the game is going for either faction so that's going to do it for our ranking of the maps from Star Wars Battlefront 1 I feel like this is a pretty justified map ranking but I know there are some people that are going to be upset especially with our treatment of uh, Kashyyyk Islands and probably Yavin Arena for sure Temple maybe not so much but somebody's always going to be upset about something but those are the two that I think we're really going to probably get some flack for but given my particular reasonings and my overall play style I feel like they're justified but of course we're all going to have different ways to play so they may work out better for you but not so much for me so feel free to let me know in those comments down below where you would put your favorite maps and if we did them justice or if we didn't and perhaps we'll have a civil conversation about it